Are you ready to make your first cut on your 3018 Pro CNC machine? Then stick around because that's what we're doing today. So if you haven't built your machine already, there is a link in the description below to last episode where we assembled our 3018 Pro CNC machine. In today's episode we're going to take a look at making our first test cut. We're going to look at the machine itself and set that up with a piece of wood. Then we're going to move over to the laptop and set all the software up needed. Then finally we're going to load in a test file, send that across to the machine and hope everything works. So let's get stuck in. There are two halves to getting the machine ready. The first is getting something on the bed ready to cut and the second is getting the tool into the spindle to do the cutting later. I like to get the bed ready first because if you're moving your hands around trying to adjust the clamps and there's a tool in the spindle you run the risk of cutting yourself or injuring yourself going into that. So let's look again the piece of wood clamp down. We're just using the standard clamps that come with the kit. The way these work is you can spin the wing nut to apply pressure on the front of the clamp. They just simply slide in, go over the wood and then apply a bit of pressure. And we'll do that for all four. There we are. The piece of wood is now firmly in place. Next thing we need to do is look at inserting the tool. I like to keep the covers on these until you're ready to use them just to protect them. The way the spindle works, there's a hole in the middle. You slide the bit up into the hole and then use this to clamp it in place. So let's do that now. You want to make sure it's pushed in as far as possible. The further out the tool is sticking the more risk you run of chatter which is where it's bouncing about and cutting. To tighten this up you can do it a little bit with your fingers but then you'll need two spanners to secure it in place. A 14 and a 17mm. Just pinch that up. You don't want to over tighten it because it will make it difficult to get the bit out later. That's the machine set up, now we can move over to the software. So with the machine ready we can now take a look at your laptop or your PC. For ease I've saved all of my files in a folder on the desktop. I'll also put a link to this in the description below. The first thing we need to do is install the driver. The driver is what allows your PC or laptop to talk to the machine. We'll open this up, let the driver run, install itself and then when it's done we'll close the windows down. The second thing we need to do is install the software. The software that comes with the machines is called Candle. A found candle can be a little bit unpredictable, so what I use instead is UGS Platform, that's Universal G Code Sender. This can be downloaded from their website simply by searching UGS Nightly Build, and the first result will be the download page. So let's go ahead and load up that software. In the bin folder, you'll see two options. The first is for a 32 bit machine. The second is for a 64-bit machine. I happen to know my laptop is a 64-bit machine, so that's the one we're going to use today. This can take a second to open. So with the software loaded, let's go ahead and take a look at the layout. At the moment, you'll see that all these buttons on the left-hand side are greyed out. This is because the software is not connected to the machine yet. If your jog controller panel doesn't load, then it'll just be on one of these other tabs and switch it over to the jog controller. Down here we have the console. This is where you'll see the G code being sent over to the machine. And over here we have the controller state. This runs live as you're controlling the head around and you'll see these numbers adjust as well. Up the top, this is where the software connects to the machine itself. The board number, this loads as default, but if yours doesn't show this number, then you may need to change it. The COM port will vary for different computers and different machines, varying on the USB port that you're using. So just drop that down and select the one that you need. I happen to know that the one for my laptop is COM port 4. 
If the port's not showing, then click the refresh button and it should load it in. Obviously your CNC machine does need to be turned on first. This is the communication method. We know that our machine uses GRBL and that's what loads the standard, so we'll also leave that as it is. The next thing to do is click the connect button. And what this will now do is connect to the machine and make sure that everything's live. All these buttons have now come to life and it means we can start using the machine itself. One of the most important areas is this jog controller down here. This allows you to move the head around and position it for your home position when you need to do the cut. If this is the first time using your machine, it's a good idea now just to run some tests and make sure that everything moves correctly. Before we do any movement though, please notice that these figures down here, these control how fast the head moves and the increments that they move in millimetres. So for example, if I want to move the X or Y axis now, it will move in 10 millimetre increments and the feed rate is at 1000. So for now, let's just do a test and move the head to the right and then we'll take it back. And now if we take this up to 40 mil and do the same again. Before we send it back though, we're just going to take the feed rate up to 2000 and it should move back twice as fast. There we are. Similarly for the step size on the Z, this controls the how many millimeters that the axis moves up and down. So if we press down now, the Z axis should move down five millimeters. The Z axis does move slower than the other mid, the other axis just because it needs to be more precise. We'll also pull it back up. Obviously when using these numbers, the lower the numbers, the finer the movements. And also the lower the speed, the more you can control it without it jumping about. So we'll take that back down to a thousand for now. And we'll also take this to 20 mil just so we can get ready to load our test program in. What I'm going to do now though is just roughly position the spindle in the middle of the board. One thing to note is although this is pointing forwards and backwards, what this is relevant to is the head, the head moving in relation to the board. So when I click for the head to move backwards, the board will actually move forwards. And this is because it's moving the head towards the back of the board. Okay, what we can now do is load in our test file. So go to the open and load in the test file. And this loads live in the visualizer over here. Now this is three dimensional, so you can move it about and rotate it. And what you'll notice is that at the moment, the test file is just a simple 50 millimeter square. I happen to know it will cut about one millimeter deep as well. The important things to note, this orange triangle here, this is the head and this moves live. So if you now move the X axis across, you'll see that jumps across as well. The other important part is this green stem here. This is the home or the starting point for the test cut. Now, you don't have to line this up with anything on your on your bed, but you need to know where it is because you have to set the zero point in order for this for the machine to know that that is the starting point for the piece. The other thing on this diagram, you'll see the yellow lines. The yellow lines are the cutting path that it will take. So if this starts here, what it will do is pull up, it will come down to this corner, come down, it will then cut the path all the way around, come back to where it started, it will then raise back up and return to the home position. What we need to do though now is come back over to the machine. We need to set the home position and lower the Z axis to touch the board. So what we're gonna do is just bring the Z axis down slowly. And you need this just to touch the top of the wood. So what I'm gonna do 
is adjust the step size down to one millimeter so we can control it much more finely and then bring it down slowly there are different methods for doing this one of the easiest methods is just putting a piece of paper underneath and once you feel that the, the tool has touched the paper then that means it's close enough to the wood so now that's just touching the wood what we need to do is if we return back to the visualizer we'll see that the head is all the way over here but we need to now tell it that the head is where we want the cut to start to do this we click the reset zero button and you'll see that's jumped back over to here when we click the send button to send the information over to the machine this will move live along the path that we've just gone over so let's do that now and do our first test cut And there we have it that's all done but what i want to do is just run over that again and we'll simply do the same test quit again but to the side so let's recap what we just did we loaded in the test file we then jogged the controller until we found where we wanted the file to start we sent it with the play button and we let it run we'll just do that once more so we'll move the x-axis over and let's find a new starting point About there should do it and then we'll lower the z-axis down until it touches the wood again and now what we need to, what you'll notice on on the visualizer is that the yellow arrow has now disappeared if we zoom out we can see it's all the way over here this is where it is in relation to the original test cut we did what we need to do is tell it that we know that the new position is the new home point or the new zero point so we'll come back up reset the zero it's brought it back into the middle of the cutting path and then we'll send it across again and watch it start up and cut another square What you might notice is that one went a little bit deeper. I think I just lowered the z-axis down a tad too far, but we've still got the square cut. And there we have our first test cut. Pretty easy, right? But what I'm not showing you on the video is the five or six hours it took me to get to this point. I was having issues with the X and Y axes jamming. I then were having software issues where it wasn't compatible with my laptop or things wasn't functioning correctly. I guess what I'm trying to say is these machines are not perfect and there is a learning curve so do persevere with them and you will get there and get the results that you're after. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode. On the next episode we're going to be putting the laser module in and doing some testing with that and seeing what fun we can have in using it in a different way. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video please click like and also subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.